Hey colleagues, my name is Possible and I'll be your tutor for today. In our previous lesson, we look at introduction to principles of microeconomics, of which we look at the introduction, look at some of the contributors, and then I also contributed to the field of economics, so I mentioned it, right? And then from there, we look at the difference between microeconomics and macroeconomics, of which we said that the microeconomics focuses on the individual sector of the economy, whilst the macroeconomics focuses on the aggregate, the economy as a whole, the economy in its totality. I hope it makes sense. So from there, we also look at economic theory, and then we look at economic model. So that is where we are starting from today. So we said that when you look at economic theory, economic theory, it is a concept that explains the relationship between cause and effect. I hope it makes sense. So economic theory talks about the cause and the effect. When we do this, what will be the effect thereof? So it looks at the relationship between the causes of something and the effect thereof. That's the um, theory. And then in the previous lecture, I told you that it is a statement that focuses on how the railway should be. I hope it makes sense. That's the written aspect of economics. Good. So we are saying that the main aim or the main goal of economic theory is to determine the cause of a situation or economic phenomenon or economic phenomenon and the effects the cause and the effects thereof so it's the main aim is to determine the cause of a situation or economic phenomenon and then the effect thereof i hope it makes sense and then from there we also look at economic model and then we said that economic model is the simplification of rare world. Rare world is underlined. It's the simplification of a rare world situation. And then, um, yes, it's the simplification of a rare world situation. So that one too, we said that, oh, whilst the theory is focusing on the written aspect of the economics, the economic model is looking at the mathematical or the graphical representation or the tabular representation of um, the economic theory. So the theory says that, let us look at the written aspect. And then the model says that, let us look at the visible or, let me say, um, the, the material aspect of the written um, statement. I hope it makes sense. So we are saying that the simplification of a real world situation. So from our previous lecture, we realized that it is the abstract abstract form of the economic theory. So we are saying that the main aim of it or it contains the assumptions that establish relationship among economic variables. So the main aim is to establish relationship among economic variables. That is the main aim of the economic model. To establish relationship among economic variables. I hope it makes sense. Now today we are starting with positive statement or positive economics and then we also end with normative statement or normative economics. When you talk about positive statements or positive economics, we are talking about um, statements that could, be, um, up, uh, that could be proved or disproved with reference to fact. I hope it makes sense. Nice one. It means that when we say something or when we, whenever you hear something about economist or any economic statement, the question is, could it be proved or disproved when we compare it or when we try to verify it with fact? Now, don't be confused. Because it is positive statement, do not ever think that, oh, always the statement must be true. No. Sometimes the statement could be false, but the situation is that that statement could be disproved that it is false. I hope it makes sense. It is not always that the statement has to be true, right? That is why we are saying that the definition of the positive statement 
is that it could either be proved or disproved by reference to fact. Yes, indeed, it is false. The statement is false. Yes, we understand it. How did you manage to know that the statement is false? Because you can make reference to the true statement. I hope it makes sense. You can only know that something is false when there is the real one. So we are saying that at the moment you can either prove or disprove the statement, then we can qualify it to be a positive statement. I'm repeating it and I'm repeating it. It does not necessarily mean that when the statement is true, it belongs to positive. And then when the statement is false, it belongs to normative. No. We are saying that this positive statement can contain a statement that is either true or false. I hope it makes sense. Provided that statement could be um, either proved or disproved when we compare it with um, the facts. I hope it makes sense. Or when we try to verify it to the facts. I hope it makes sense. Or verify it with the facts, the actual facts on the ground. Now we are saying that it looks at the positive statement looks at what is rather than what should be or what is ought to be. I hope it makes sense. We are saying that it looks at what is what is prevailing on the market or what is prevailing in the economy rather than how the economy ought or should be. I hope it makes sense. So it's more or less like almost every question that you will hear, um, you will hear, um, you will hear that it is talking about the ought or the should automatically qualifies to be under the normative statement. I'm repeating it. Anytime you see the should or the ought to be, the first thing to come into your mind is the normative statement. But anytime you see the, the sentence or the statement, and then you see that the statement is talking about what is, it does not necessarily mean that the what is will be in the sentence or they will be in the statement. But you see that the, the statement is, it means that like the statement knows what it is talking about. That's what I mean. Then your attention has to move straight to the positive statement. Now let us quickly look at the normative statement. We are saying that it represents a statement of opinion, that value judgment, which cannot either, cannot either be proved or disproved. So the normative statement cannot either be proved or disproved. I hope it makes sense well, with reference to fact or with reference to the truth on the ground. So we are saying that it looks at what should be or ought to be rather than what it is. What should be or what ought to be rather than what is it on the market or in the economy. I hope it makes sense. So anytime you're reading a statement or you're reading a question and you see that the question is like is giving out assumption or the question is trying to convey like uh, uncertainty to you, it means that we are talking about the, the normative statement. Now, how come that we got positive statement and then we got, um, we got normative statement and then we got positive statement? Don't forget that we are looking at the economic theory and we are looking at the economic model. And then we said that the economic theory and the economic model, all of them are statements that represent the real world or that stands for the cause and the effects. And now we are saying that this statement within the scope of economic theory and the economic model could be categorized into two. We have the one that talks about what it is on the economy or in the market. And then the one that talks, that suggests, that prescribes, which is subjective. The positive is objective. I hope it makes sense. It's objective, it describes. So those who use positive statements, they are scientists. That is what we said, economics is a social science. So the aspect of economics, which is science, is the positive statement. It talks about what it is, the objectivity of the market. It describes what is there. But when you look at the normative statement, it is subjective. It, it prescribes. While the positive is describing what is there, then this one is prescribing. It is trying to give an assumption. It is, it is ought to be this. 
So this the normative statement or those who are using the normative economics, they 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 are social economists. I hope it makes sense. Nice one. Now let us quickly look at some of the examples of um, positive statement and the normative statement, and then we close for this class. Higher interest rate causes people to save more. Whether it is true or it is not true, that does not concern us. But if we look at it, what we know is that higher interest rate causes people to save more. It could be proved or disproved with reference to fact. Yes, indeed. We can go to a country and then we start conducting data and then at the end of the day we get to know that, oh, higher interest rates either causes people to save more or not. So we are saying that it could be proved or disproved. Higher interest rate causes people to save more. So we are saying that it is a positive statement. Positive statement. I hope it makes sense. Road use. Road use charges would increase traffic. Road use charges would increase traffic. Now, listen to me carefully. You can either agree with this or disagree with it. Yes, that one you are right. But that isn't what we are looking at. We are looking at the fact that this could either be proved or disproved with reference to fact. I hope it makes sense. Provided we are using my country, Ghana, uh, as an example. Yes, the government can say that, hey, you are lying. Road use charges shall by no means increase traffic. I hope it makes sense. That one could be disproved or could be approved. I hope it makes sense. So the fact that you do not agree or disagree with this does not necessarily classify the statement to be positive or normative. I'm emphasizing this one several times because I know what I'm talking about. Some of them, you yourself, you even know that oh, this one, the statement is not true. I hope it makes sense. Yes, it is not true because you have been able to uh, um, approve or disprove it. You have been able to compare it to what is on the ground. Then that you have been able to see that, oh, it is not true. I hope it makes sense. So once you have been able to compare it with what is on the ground, it means that when you compare it with a reference, eh, it could be disproved. Then it is positive statement. I hope it makes sense. So this one also is positive statement positive because it, it could either be proved or disproved number three the tax system should be used to reduce traffic now i've told you here is prescription it's a suggestion the tax system should be should be used to reduce traffic it means that the person is not certain the person is giving out his assumption is giving out like an idea so if I'm giving out my idea or a prescription, I'm saying my something. So that's why it doesn't concern that we can't like, um, we cannot prove it or disprove it. I hope it makes sense because you are trying to give out what you know, like it's not something that you are so certain about, like you are giving an assumption or you are prescribing something. So if you like, you can take it, if you don't like, you can you not take it. So you are saying that the tax system should be, and then the secret is I've told you, anytime you see they should be or they ought to be, it means that you are, work, you are working within the scope of normative statement. 90%, the 1% is the, um, the um, let me say, the exemption. I hope it makes sense. So the tax system should be its normative statement. The normative statement. The normative statement. Government should tax the rich to help the poor. Whether it is true or not, he is trying to give out his idea or his mind. The government should tax the rich to help the poor. That one also is a normative statement. Normative statement. Normative statement. The next one is smoking should be... Open up your mind here. Question 5 and question 6. Smoking should be... So they should be discouraged. It's normative statement. So from here, smoking should be discouraged is normative statement. Normative statement. Normative statement. If smoking is not discouraged, government will spend a lot on health this year. This is a lot. A lot on health this year. 
that is positive. Positive. So the answer is normative statement and positive statement. Look at the order of arrangement. Normative comes first before the positive. So he said that government uh, smoking should be discouraged. It's a normative statement. And if smoking is not discouraged, government will spend a lot on health this year. It's a positive statement. So it is not always that you only get normative statement or positive statement, uh, only positive statement. No. Some, sometimes you can get combined. Sometimes you can get normative, normative, positive, positive in one sentence. Sometimes you can get normative, normative, positive. Sometimes you can get positive, positive, normative. So open up your mind. Let us look at D. Uh, the six, sorry, six. High income tax rates discourage efforts. High income tax rates discourage efforts. Here is positive statement. So government ought to ought to reduce it. That is normative statement. I hope it makes sense. So high income tax rate, discourage effort, positive statement, and so government ought to reduce it, normative statement. Thank you. Today we look at economic theory, economic model, positive statement or positive economics, normative statement or normative economics, and then we look at examples on normative statement and then the positive statement or positive economics and the normative economics. In our next lecture, we are going to continue with it. Kindly click on the subscribe button if you have not done so. Leave your message at the comment section. You can also like it and then also pick up the contact on the screen. 0548 0548-537258. 0548 so that you can um, WhatsApp us um, with your questions or anything that is bothering you. I hope it makes sense. Once again, my name is Possible. Until we meet again for another lesson, I can humbly say bye-bye for now. Bye.